Guys, I'm standing out here in my early spring lawn. I say that with a grain of salt. It's actually late February, but uh, weather has been nice and my lawn is basically in early spring. I got a nice green color. I've already mowed this a couple times. It is growing. The soil is warm. The lowest recorded soil temperature that I've recorded over the past week is about 44 degrees. The highest soil temperature that I've recorded over the past week was 58 degrees. So somewhere in there, my average is about 53. I'm going to call it 53 degree average right now. What I want to talk to you about today, though, is has nothing to do with spring lawns, really. But I do want to talk about iron usage in the lawn. I'm going to be talking about liquid iron specifically. Liquid iron gets sprayed on through a tank, backpack, some sort of sprayer. And the whole point of it is to go onto the leaf tissue and get absorbed through the foliar kind of leaf system. You're gonna end up experiencing a lot less oxidation. And the plant is gonna be able to respond to that iron much faster. So here's what I wanna show you. Does liquid iron actually make your grass greener? Now, I think most people really do understand that it does, but I want to show you the difference here uh, within a couple days or so. Now, today is a nice day. Tomorrow, it's going to be cloudy. We got snow coming in. We're literally talking in a few days, my expected overnight temperature, I want to say it's on Tuesday morning, like in three days from now, is 10. So it's supposed to get down to about 10 degrees in a few days. I have a feeling, even though I'm going to get a dusting of snow in the next two days, that that dusting of snow is going to go down onto really green grass. It's going to be a pretty cool contrast and I want to show you. All right, now if you're going to put down granular iron, just to touch on this, your soil temperature really needs to not dip below 40 uh, at night. Here we are kind of late morning and up, I'm at about 55 right now. If I was putting down a granular iron product, this would be an appropriate time to do it, but you have to water it in uh, pretty good. With the foliar application, really the important thing is the grass can't be dormant. So uh, the soil temperature kind of comes into play because if the soil temperature is too cold, then the grass will be dormant. But mostly you need green growing non-dormant leaf tissues. Otherwise, they're not going to absorb uh, the foliar spray that you're that you're applying. So over the past couple of weeks, I've done some somewhat extraordinary things to make sure that my grass is not dormant at this time. That's not going to apply to most people in the month of February, uh, but March and April and certainly May, just about anyone could do this. Foliar sprays, you're going to be putting it onto the grass and the grass needs to be dry. Otherwise, it's just going to bead and roll off. You're not going to get good, uh, good absorption. So the grass is dry right now. I haven't watered it in a while. I, it's just, I mean, it's dry. So when I go and I spray this on, you're going to spray it on and you're going to want to let it sit there without walking on it, without watering it in. It needs to sit there so that it can absorb. It's like putting moisturizer on your skin. You wouldn't like rub moisturizer on your skin and then just wipe it off with a paper towel. It's not going to do anything. We want the, the iron to be able to sit on the grass blades until it really dries and goes all the way in. Now, I'm going to let that sit on the grass blades for a handful of hours somewhere before sundown today, maybe five hours from now, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some additional products onto the lawn, some humic acid and some micronutrients, and then I'm gonna water that in. So most of the iron will get foliar absorbed, and what is not foliar absorbed will get watered into the soil, and hopefully some of the root systems will pick some of that up. That's not really what I'm shooting for here, but I do want the micronutrients in there because they're gonna help with uh, the chlorophyll production and the photosynthesis process Process that is just starting um, as spring is just around the corner. For this experiment, I'm going to be using Lawn Stars Chelated Liquid Iron. This is the product that I've used for the past year and change. Uh, this bottle is really the first bottle I ever bought. I don't apply iron to the lawn very often because it's not necessary. This is really just for demonstration and for learning purposes for you. In fact, I'm not even going to apply it to my entire yard. I'm only going to apply it right here. What you're going to notice is in a liquid form, you're getting 6% iron. When you're putting down something like ironite, a granular thing, it's closer to 20%. And that's because the product oxidizes much faster in granular form. So you can see per label instructions, 1.5 to 3 ounces per thousand for maintenance mode. I am on maintenance mode, but I'm only doing 500 square feet. 
So instead of three ounces per thousand, I'm gonna go ahead and do one and a half. I might round that up to two for simplicity's sake. All right, just to get this out there, I want you to know that the hardest part of lawn care is filming a video for me. Filming and editing and putting these videos together is way harder than actually doing this stuff. So if you've never applied liquid iron to the, to the lawn before, if you've never like used a sprayer before, that's, that's the easy part. Uh, this is the first time I have ever used this sprayer. I purchased it myself. So um, yeah, it was worth me spending my own money on it. I used a pump sprayer last year because my battery one died and I just never replaced it. Pump sprayers are way cheaper and they work just fine. They just take a little bit more effort. We're gonna take this thing off. I want you to understand here, liquid iron, we want it to sit on the leaf blade. So when I spray it on the lawn, I don't really want an excessive amount of water in there. Now, other products, when you spray it on the lawn, you end up watering it in. The whole point is to get it into the soil so the root system can get at it. Uh, also, other products are quite thick, so you need a lot of water to be able to spray it uh, well, to spray it good out of a sprayer. Iron, however, it's not thick, it's kind of runny. Um, and I don't want a ton of liquid going on to the lawn because I want it to all sit on the leaf blade. I don't want it to go down to the soil. So I literally only have a, a minimal amount of water in here. I still probably have too much. I've got two thirds of a gallon for about 500 square feet. I'm gonna put three ounces in and it's gonna be a little bit diluted. I could use more water, but I'm not going to. Honestly, I probably use less but that's what I got in here right now. Uh, later today, when I go and put down humic acid, I'm gonna be putting a lot of water into, this, into the sprayer relative to the amount of humic acid that goes down. When you're dealing with iron, protect your, your areas, it'll stain. I've never stained this, but I always do this on cardboard. Also, I'm using glass for this. I usually use plastic. I use glass because I can clean it. Plastic, it'll stain the plastic too. That's it, man. This tank sprayer takes approximately three minutes and 15 seconds to spray one gallon of fluid out. I got about two thirds of a gallon, which means I'm gonna be looking at probably two minutes and 10 seconds, give or take, to cover 500 square feet. So whatever sprayer you're using, whether it's a pump sprayer or a backpack, a battery, uh, whatever it is, test it with water over in some other area to figure out how long it takes to spray out what you need to spray out. Once you figure that out, then you can write it down in a notebook or just use your brain. Pretty simple to figure out. Another little tidbit of information that should be helpful for some of you people. When you buy a sprayer, most of these things are just plastic and you just screw them together. The wands we're talking about here. There's a connection here, 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 and here. There's four of them. Teflon tape stops leaks. These things are, I mean, it's high pressure. So uh, if you're ever putting one of these things together, even if you buy a cheapo, like $20 unit from your local, like Walmart or whatever, pick up a roll of Teflon tape and uh, wrap it. It's gonna go much, much better. You don't want it dripping out all over the place. No matter what it is you're spraying, you want even coverage, drips or not even. All right, it's been five days. It's February 24th right now. We're still in very cold weather. The past few nights have been in the single digits and we're supposed to be in the teens tonight, but look at what is going on back here anyway. Is that not spectacular or what? Look at this. This looks amazing right now. Now you see back here, that's a normal February dormancy back there. And you know, it was greening up a little bit up until five days ago when I put the, uh, the iron on. But now here's the same perspective that I gave you earlier in the video. Look at that. That is crazy. All right, obviously iron does work. Even in cold weather, this foliar application of iron really greened things up way before spring starts. Spring is still, what, three and a half weeks away. Uh, and this lawn looks nuts. It looks crazy good. Despite how cool this looks, I don't spray iron on my lawn very often. And usually only when I do, I'm doing it to make a point here on this channel. 
up here is a video that I made back in 2021. It's about the things that people don't quite get about iron uh, and iron applications in the lawn. I'd say a very small minority understand this point up here. So make sure to watch this video next and thank you for watching this one.